I grew up on a farm in Kentucky. And I just always remember there being music. And we were pretty isolated. We were pretty far from town. So we did have to entertain ourselves. And from an infant on, they would sing to us. My dad would play and sing. They would perform out. And so most of the songs I know, especially the traditional ones, are just ones I heard my parents sing. And this is an old Gene Ritchie tune. All my friends fell out on me because I kept your company. But let them say whatever they will. I love my love with a free goodwill. One I love, two he loves. My mom, I guess, fell in love with the old ballads during the folk revival. And as a teenager, she picked up guitar and Mountain Dulcimer and started learning the traditional ballads. But then I did the typical teenage thing and rebelled against my parents' music and got into mainstream music. And uh, it was probably more late teens. I started wanting to learn to play Mountain Dulcimer. And uh, I thought, well, that's kind of cool. Maybe my parents' music <laughs> isn't so bad. Well, the mountain or Appalachian dulcimer is a true Appalachian instrument. There's no other instrument like it in the world. The nearest relative is something called a German Scheitholt. Um, so what they think is when the settlers came over, a lot of settlers came from Germany, Ireland, and Scotland that settled in the Appalachian Mountains. They didn't bring instruments because, uh, you know, they brought the bare necessities. They did bring songs from Ireland and Scotland and England, and what they did was they formed an instrument that uh, could accompany those ballads. The original ones didn't have full frets. You couldn't chord on them. They strummed usually with a feather, um, kind of a drone, just a simple strum, like... So it's really kind of like it was a drone instrument just to back up um, their singing. It translates literally into sweet music. Once I started playing Mount Dulcimer, I think I just fell in love with it, probably like she did in her teen years. It was a pretty easy instrument to learn, and it's, I love singing, and it's a great instrument like to accompany singing and the old time ballads. When we were little, we had to get up with the family band and play. I probably got serious about it in my late teens and I started playing with my younger sister. And I did that from my late teens to early 20s until I moved to Western Maryland. That was in 1998 when I moved here. I can't calculate that right now. It's 2011. 13 years. I'm still here. <laughs> what I usually do when I come to a community right away, I try to find other musicians or old time musicians because a lot of it is about community to me and that's kind of where I first get involved. And when I grew up, my parents would have all their musician friends over and you, everybody brought food and you played all night long. And it always still feels weird to me to like perform traditional music. I just still feel like it's, you know, it's more like, I want to sit and play it on the porch. <laughs> it never fails. People will come up and they want to talk about um, the dulcimer and, you know, the songs. They just say that music reminds me of, like, going and visiting my grandmother's farm. My favorite are probably the kind of old modal ballads, and some of them are really sad and depressing. Um, 
but that was their way of passing stories down. You know, they put it to music. Some of them are about murders and lost love. People have always needed a way to express themselves. So there's some old ballads that, man, they can still tear your heart apart. And I think putting it to that old modal music and that kind of ancient sound, the combination of the two, uh, really gets to me. <laughs> I really have been inspired by Jean Ritchie, who I consider kind of the mother of the mountain dulcimer, um, who is originally from Kentucky too. And she was kind of the first one to introduce the mountain dulcimer to the outside world, then brought her mountain dulcimer <laughs> out of the hollers of Kentucky into New York. I feel like, especially with the mountain dulcimer, that's not one that a lot of young people play. And if any of them die out, I feel like it's gonna be that one. That part of it, I mean, it's going to be lost because we're just not isolated anymore. And they were very isolated in the Appalachian Mountains and came up with this music and weren't exposed to so much other stuff. So now it's really a blend, but it's, I, I feel like it's still getting passed along even if people are doing newer things with the music because I guess that's how, you know, folk music is. It's always morphing and changing. Um, and I don't think it'll ever go away. When the outside comes in and companies that come in and make you dependent on them, a lot of times you lose those traditional things because it creates a culture of dependence, kind of a mono economy. And then with destroying, you know, the mountains where they were, had learned to live off of the land and they knew like how to go and harvest wild plants and use it medicinally and everything, you're losing all that. And I think the culture, the crafts, the music, everything is really tied into the land also. I feel like it's kind of like what they say about peace, um, really to start working towards world peace, you have to start in the home, you know, peace in the home. And I kind of feel that way about traditional music, like I'm exposing my son to it, his friends to it. I remember in West Virginia, we would sit on the porch and play and all the little kids would gather around and they'd want to play it. And um, I uh, feel like I want to do all I can, you know, to preserve it. and pass it along. I only love one I love, two he loves, three he's true to me. All my friends fell out on me because I kept your company. But let